Hey there, Central Ohio. I'm Tim Weather Impact Meteorologist Michael Barons. Welcome to this version of the 10 Weather Impact Show. A lot of activity heading our way as we head into the weekend. We've already seen uh, impacts across the region today. We have a 10 TV weather impact alert day in place for your Saturday. It'll start after the noon hour. Wind and rain, your two biggest concerns out there. So make sure you're ready for potential impacts this weekend. Have the 10 TV app downloaded on your phone. That way you'll get any weather alerts as soon as they're issued. And of course, you'll be able to track any storms with the interactive radar. When it comes to this weekend, we do have a level two out of five risk factor for severe weather in place over central Ohio. Most of that is northwest of Columbus, but this does include us here in Franklin County, does include Delaware County, most of Licking County and areas off to the northwest. The rest of the region also under a risk, just slightly lower level one out of five risk for the rest of the 10 TV viewing area. When it comes to concerns for the weekend of the severe threats, we'd say wind is likely the highest risk factor that we'll see here across central Central Ohio. We can't rule out some hail or that isolated tornado threat, but that is by far going to be lower than the wind threat and adding on top of this will be continued risk for flooding. We've already seen flooding out there across central Ohio this morning and earlier this week as heavy rain has just started to come down uh, from time to time across the region and that pattern continuing into the weekend. So we need to be ready for possible flooding out there. Remember, uh, if you come across a flooded roadway, that's saying turn around, don't drown as we always never know how deep those floodwaters are and it doesn't take a lot of rushing water uh, to displace a vehicle. Speaking of flooding concerns through 2 a.m. Saturday, flood watch in place for most of our eastern counties. This is going to be uh, out on 70 past Newark toward Muskingum County, uh, over toward Guernsey County and down toward Athens, Benton and Jackson counties as well, all under this flooding watch for uh, the rest of Friday and into early Saturday. But of course we could see some more concerns with flooding as we head toward the weekend. Right now a gray afternoon out there across central Ohio. It's been kind of a gloomy looking day that has kept temperatures down some. So that's a positive note. If you want to look at it that way this morning, we did get down into the 60s and 70s across central Ohio. Those temperatures, though, not going to take much of a break from the summer pattern. We'll see uh, more warm days ahead, and we're certainly seeing the humid days ahead as well. Dew points this afternoon, 70s across the region. This is part of the reason we've seen so much rain and those storms have been able to produce so much impact is there's a lot of moisture out there. Uh, in the atmosphere and that moisture has been resulting in some pretty heavy rainfall rates. We continue to stay in that moist environment here this afternoon. The next 12 hours we could see some rain here in central Ohio, but again, nothing uh, uh, crazy right now uh, in the forecast. We see those temperatures out there up into the upper 70s as we head toward later this afternoon. We'll likely be in the 80s for a number of spots out there as well. Rain chances kind of peaking during the afternoon hours and then coming back down uh, as we head through the rest of the evening. When it comes to what's on radar right now, we see those scattered showers across the region. Again, nothing extreme heading into the afternoon. No severe weather at the moment. No areas of very heavy rain, but occasionally you may see those moderate showers pop up on the radar, working our way through the rest of the afternoon. So we'll keep a close eye on that. We'll take a look at the hour by hour forecast here. Those scattered shower chances continue into the afternoon. Again, we'll peak those chances about mid afternoon. As we head into this evening, a lot of that rainfall starting to migrate its way south, eventually uh, coming to an end for a number of us here in central Ohio as we head into tonight. Again, that flood watch for those eastern and southeastern counties goes till the early part of Saturday morning. Then as we get into the day on Saturday, day starts off fairly quiet out there heading into the afternoon. We'll see that increased chance for showers and storms again after the noon hour tomorrow is when we have that weather impact alert in place for that possibility for some strong to severe storms. We see those showers and storms pushing through as we head into Saturday evening, continuing as we work our way into Saturday uh, more toward about midnight. Eventually all this rain again also starts to push its way on out, so there will be dry time that you can get out and use there on your Saturday, but you'll have to stay weather aware, especially in the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow. Rainfall through Saturday morning. Some areas could pick up heavier totals again. Uh, 
flood watch in place for those southeastern counties. Uh, heaviest rain going to be along in south of I-70. And then again, we'll have to watch out as we head through the rest of this weekend. Your 10 weather impact seven day forecast includes that uh, weather impact alert day on Saturday. We have the rain today. We have the showers and storms tomorrow. Again, watch out second half of the day. Wind and flooding going to be the two biggest concerns we'll watch for. Temperatures don't move much from there into Sunday. Still a chance for showers and storms, hoping to dry things out by the time we get into your Monday. Temperatures out there still in the mid 80s by that point, but the shower and storm chances come back in short order. We are back with rain chances by Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Those temperatures will push their way on up into the 80s and 90s once again as we head toward next week. So we're going to stay uh, in the summer weather pattern and continue to see those weather impacts as a result. And speaking of some weather impacts, let's now turn to flooding that happened overnight from the Buckeye Lake area. This was video from earlier this morning where you can see streets nearly entirely submerged underwater. 10 TV reporter Amy Steigerwald went out to the scene and filed this report. If you take a look where I'm at right now, this street uh, has water stretching a few houses down. This is right off of North Bank Road and cellars. The entire street flooded as neighbors are waking up this uh, morning and into this afternoon working to clean things up. I did speak with neighbors who tell me there isn't a ton of damage inside their homes, but that their front yards are obviously underwater. One family I spoke with was actually unfortunately supposed to have a fundraiser tomorrow, but they have to cancel that because all of the parking, which was going to happen in the front yards, obviously not possible anymore because of the intense rain that this area saw. Many neighbors say they tell me they're used to it flooding over here. This is nothing new to them. However, they were a little bit shocked to see it this time of year. We were actually in Gahanna and uh, I kept looking at the radar because we have that party this weekend and uh, the radar just stayed right here for like it seemed like an hour and I'm like, oh, that's not good. And a reminder, regardless of where you are, if you see high water, it's best to not drive through it. We have seen a couple cars do that. Thankfully, they made it out safely, but your best bet is to turn around. Don't drown. Reporting in Buckeye Lake, Amy Stuggerwald for 10 TV News. And it's not just been a concern in Ohio with this flooding, but all around the nation, especially over the past few weeks, we've seen scenes of heavy rain and of course that impact from flooding. New video in overnight from Shawnee, Kansas, showing the impact of heavy rain and flooding in the central plains. Heavy rain causing water to flow through the streets of this neighborhood. And moving over to Kansas City, early Thursday morning, fire crews performed 18 water rescues for people stranded in their vehicles. As of late Wednesday, more than five inches of rain has fallen across Kansas City, marking one of the wettest days on record in July. Thankfully, no injuries have been reported. In Denver, floodwaters greatly impacted traffic on 6th Avenue overnight into early Thursday morning almost closing the roads with dangerous driving conditions in that underpass. Alerts are posted warning drivers of standing water in some areas across the metro as of Thursday morning. And in New Mexico, areas hit for a second time in as many weeks with devastating flooding. You can see that turning streets there into raging rivers. The National Weather Service warned flash flooding could be capable of considerable damage in the wildfire scarred area last week. Three people, including two children, are unfortunately killed after torrential rain triggered those flash flooding conditions. And on the Gulf Coast, heavy rain is expected to continue today and tomorrow. Many communities are doing everything they can to keep floodwaters out. Katie Weiss reports from Berwick, Louisiana. Torrential downpours slamming into southern Louisiana dumped up to a half foot of rain, blinding drivers and sending floodwater into roads. Lightning also lit up the sky over New Orleans as the storm system moved on shore Thursday. In Morgan City, Louisiana, these pump stations are the best protection from flash flooding. Mayor Lee Dragna says they work hard to push rainwater back under levee walls and into the Atchafalaya River. If this isn't working properly, what happens? People flood. Businesses flood. Happens. You know, we're going to avoid that. The mayor says the pump stations are aging and need to be watched 24 7. If they break down in a storm like this, it only takes 20 minutes for water to overflow and flood the city. 
Yeah, I'm a little concerned about what's coming now. Near New Orleans, people have been filling sandbags to protect their homes and their neighbors. Making sure that my neighbors are okay because a lot of the elderly don't have cars. They can't get out here to get sandbags. Crews there have been clearing catch basins and draining canals to prepare for flooding. I think that we all need to be prepared during hurricane season and this is part of it. And in Morgan City across the river here, those pump stations could be further stressed by more rain on the way. The mayor says that those pump stations right now can only pump out about half the capacity they'd normally be able to if they were in top shape. Katie Weiss, CBS News, Berwick, Louisiana. And even as other areas of concern pop up this week with flooding, we're still watching the latest out of Texas. Ohio Task Force One is deploying more canine teams to the region. The Lone Star State continues to deal with devastating floods. We're now sending four additional teams that left earlier today. And this help comes after the death toll from those floods now sits at 135. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says that more than a dozen state agencies are working to find any potential survivors and help those impacted. And I got to tell you, we've not seen a better response in the state of Texas. And there are, are articulated reasons for that. One is there was a great deal of collaboration at all levels from the very first minute all the way until this moment in time. The response by local officials was extraordinary. A special session of the Texas State Legislature will begin next Monday focused on flood relief and new warning systems. There was so much flooding in the news and an apparent reversal, of course, the Trump administration is actually moving forward with a critical flash flood risk database. That's according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration official and an internal NOAA email seen by CNN. This database would for the first time take climate change into account when making precipitation frequency estimates, and it would help people understand their risk for flash flooding and assist civil engineers, designers, and builders with construction and infrastructure projects. The move comes after it was reported earlier this week that the administration had paused works on part of that project. And to wrap up our coverage over the things in Texas, one of the things that we've been trying to do is highlight the everyday heroes who have helped recover from those floods and helped during that tragic event. Today we want to show how some everyday bus drivers actually jumped into action to rescue the stranded when every moment mattered. Dramatic new video showing the moments a convoy of Kerrville ISD school buses precariously crossing damaged roads to pick up stranded campers and counselors along the Guadalupe River. You had no idea what you were being called in for and you said it didn't matter what we were being called in for. We just knew we needed to help. We, we knew the basic. Uh, we were going to get kids. Tyvee High School principal Rick Sorella is one of more than a dozen KISD employees who answered the district's call for help from Camp Mystic and Camp La Junta. The sheer devastation, it was, it was, it was very sobering. Um, we, had, we had seen floods before, not to this magnitude. Sorella says the buses would alert each other via radio of obstacles, ultimately bringing hundreds of people to safety. They were in their pajamas. They were holding teddy bears. They had what they could grab with them in the middle of the night to get on the bus. Sorella shows us the very bus he was driving that morning. This is your bus now? It's my bus now, yes. <laughs> bus eight. Bus eight, forever. KISD's bus barn, as it's called, houses all of the buses used that day, including bus eight and bus six, where we meet transportation director Ken Knowles. Um, I've had the opportunity to review some of the footage from that, and what you see is girls coming out hand in hand, linked all the way onto this bus. You watch them get on to bus six, and as they're headed back into town, they're singing their Christian camp songs. Knowles is referring to this viral video, campers and counselors from Camp Mystic singing songs as they come face to face with storm damage. We'll never look at bus six the same again. Knowles was out of the country on a cruise when the floods hit. I mean, you gotta be so proud of your team. Oh my gosh, uh, I've never been so proud of a team. I've Knowles says district leaders helped to quickly get the buses rolling within 30 minutes of asking for help. You can no longer say I'm just a bus driver because that day on July 4th and then the next day on July 5th, you were a comforter, you were a rescuer, and in my mind, they're all heroes. In Kerrville, I'm Amanda Henderson, KHOU 11 News. 
And tonight on 10 TV plus you can see exactly how floodwaters rose and Texans answered with courage. Watch hearts and heroes flooding in the Texas Hill Country and find out how you can also help those still in need. You can stream that for free starting tonight at 630 again on 10 TV plus it's available for free to download and watch on your TV. If you would also like more information on how to help those impacted by the historic flooding, you can visit cbsnews.com slash help Texas for more information on ways you can safely donate to relief efforts that are currently underway. And now to some news from around our community and the push to keep Ohio as a leader in the skies. We're talking about efforts to maintain and boost Ohio's aerospace industry. 10 Weather Impact meteorologist Meredith Garfalo looks at exactly how that's happening. Ohio is home to more than 110,000 employees in the aerospace industry at more than 600 companies specializing in aerospace as well as aviation. The state is also the dominant supplier to Airbus, which is a prominent manufacturer of helicopters, commercial planes, and even satellites. At an all day conference, the company's chairman and CEO for North America shared his vision on how central Ohio will play a critical role in the expansion and innovation of the industry. It's got a, a, an ecosystem that is used to aerospace and aviation, has a commitment to veterans, has a, a commitment to workforce development, obviously uh, um, has a GE here, which is a very important partner of Airbus. And, all of those things come together to make Ohio such an incredible place to do business. These partnerships will benefit local businesses, also helping drive the economy and keep Ohio on the map as a dominant location for aerospace and aviation. We need to focus big time on the jobs, on the education, on the opportunities for people to get into the business, but companies like Airbus are very creative. Sierra Nevada, you've got the electric uh, vertical vehicle guys that are all here. You can design it, you can build it, you can test it. It's all here kind of in the cradle of aviation, in the shadow of two bicycle guys. How cool is that? Jobs Ohio says they are looking forward to developing our future workforce with continued efforts to get students interested and excited about careers in the aerospace industry, in STEM fields, and beyond. And finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10 TV. Dogs and puppies from parts of the Texas area impacted by those flooding uh, earlier this week have now made their way to a no kill shelter paws in Chicago. The new arrivals have been receiving vaccinations and medical attention and the animals have been in Texas shelters actually before those floods began. Organizers say that the pet transfers help free up space in those Texas shelters, allowing their staff members to focus on rescuing animals and reuniting them with their humans. These arrivals are the second group to arrive in Chicago from Texas this past month. And check this video out. NOAA's Geo Go or Goes East satellite caught this impressive solar filament erupting from the sun over the course of 10 hours on July 14th. Coincidentally, it happened on the 21st, 25th anniversary of one of the most powerful solar events the space age has known as the Bastille Day Solar Event. That was on July 14th, 2000. Again, this filament became erupting from the sun. Amazing video there showing just how much we've improved our satellite observation capabilities over the past century. Amazing that we can get such clear video, such an impressive event. Now that's it for your 10 weather impact show here on 10 TV plus coming up later tonight. Chief meteorologist Jerry Marks will be breaking down the latest on our weather impact day for this weekend. Until then, you can get more news and weather online at 10 Have a great afternoon.